How everybody doing? It's Chris Drummond from Progressive Action. I was gonna um today I was gonna talk about kind of follow up on what Tramel was talking about. The other his last lie, the arbitration, um, Richie Davis's charges. Yeah, I think that was the show before, but the derailment kinda changed everything up. And to everybody who was involved in this unfortunate derailment. Um, you know, God bless you and I wish you all the best. And early in the week, we all thought that this was, um, I'm reading, we thought that there was a storm coming. And every time a storm comes, we get this bulletin in RTL 158.22. The subject is employee attendance during emergency or in climate storm, in climate um, conditions. And everyone who's familiar with this bulletin know that this bulletin is basically saying, get to work. They don't care what the circumstances is. You are to come to work. And this bulletin is when the root is, is, is condescending. And it's dismissive of us. But in a way, is this is what transit is. Get on your train and shut up. And at the bottom of this bulletin is all the man's name at the bottom bottom of it is um Paul McPhee. He's a chief officer, field operations for service and delivery. And Mr. McPhee, I don't know why he's still here. He's a relic of a bygone era. I think he's a bad, wretched individual. And he also referred to us one time as criminals. Um, recidivists, recidivists. And I don't think he should be here. He has no respect for us. But who has respect for us? And I just want, we, we got past the storm. But I want our brothers and sisters to remember this. Everybody said y'all have short memories, the membership. I've said it. But remember, it's four years after COVID. And when we came back, everything we did, everything we sacrificed, and we're treated worse than before the pandemics. So when you think about reading this bulletin and braving, kissing your kids and your um, family, Good night or good morning or farewell or so that I'll see you later. Same bye. Let's put it that way. And this in climate weather, it's a snowstorm, rain, winds and all that. Think about how we was treated. Treat about what we got for our sacrifice and losing our brothers and sisters. We got nothing. Now think about that next time you read this bulletin and they're imploring you to risk life and limb for this company. Think about that. And with this, um, and McPhee, President Richard Davey, Chairman Lever, these are folks that make decisions that affect us, and they've never been on the train. They never been on the bus. They never been on them tracks. They don't relate to us as human beings. I would never take a picture with Richie Davy. Now, if you're a union officer, I hear you, union officer. They have to. Even you, you have union officers that I'm sure despise Richie Davis and Canelo Gomez. You have to take them photos. You have to. It's your job. Your obligation. You have to. I don't charge nobody for that. But I would never. Black, black leaders, so-called black leaders do it all the time. They don't care what a politician does, has done, or hasn't done for our community. You come to a black church, excuse me, you come to a black church, um, you go to a community center, you go to a community activist office, they don't care what who the politician is. They're going to smile and cheese with this politician. 
And I don't understand how anybody would stand with Jan Oliva, um, Richard Davis, or President Dabby, or any of these people who don't give a damn about this. And it's evident in them photos of President Davy, Davy, and Chairman Libra standing on them tracks with no PPEs. Hilarion Joseph died less than 40 days ago. When I was at that board meeting, Chairman Libra didn't even know his name. That's a fact. But they don't care. And imagine if one of us went on the tracks. Let's just say RTO went on the tracks with no vests and no PPEs. And Davey saw us. You know what this is? You know what he would do? He would call um, Senior VP Kreslow. Hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Dimitri Kreslow. Demetrius. Who would then call the general, Soup. Who would then call line, Soup, or whatever Soup on duty. And probably take that member out of the service. And there was a photo of him without the vest in his PPEs. God forbid. But they go out there. And they move around like that. Because we're nothing to them. We're less than to them. They could care less about us. That's why um, Richie Davey could say that it was human error. We're riffraff to them. This term, hoi polloi to them. We please to them. We're grunts. We're nothing. But folks are supposed to get on their train and get on their bus and shut up. And his comments prove that. Richie, he can wait to throw us under the train. They rule out MTA officials, rule out mechanical failure, or a signal malfunction. This is who Richie Davy is. All he care about is employee valuability. He, don't, he didn't mention the vandals. If you have no vandals, you have no derailment. But the vandals are there. Because we are a wreck for them. They defecate in our cabs. They assault us. They wait for the cops. They we talk about how many thousand cameras it is. So what? They smile for the cops. Only place where cameras work is Vegas. And he said they got more cameras in Vegas. So what? They asked Miss Homney from the National Transportation Safety Board. About the vandals, it ain't even it ain't even a topic. They don't care. They should be responsible for what happened. That crew would not have to deal with them circumstances if there was an environment of disrespect and disregard for MTA for us and the property, the trains and buses we work on, and. It's crazy because they, they know there's no consequences. The public know, listen, we got sat. They know it ain't everybody know. It ain't no secret. There's no consequences. They getting on these trains making, they might as well, I don't know if they have a page dedicated to disrespecting us. I don't know. I don't know, but they have no regard for us because the governor the the uh, mayor, MTA, Richie Davis, Richie Davy, I get Richie Davy, Richie Davy gets Richie Davis later, and um, Libra don't care about this, and they always have. They have um, Chief Kempler. He's the transit police chief. This guy's at every press conference. He's always out front. I'm trying to figure out why is he there. And the FDNY did the rescue. Why is he out front? Is he Richie Davy Davy's personal bodyguard? And he did this press conference. He almost implied that the cops was responsible for saving, doing everything. I watched one of the press conference. It's funny because they always, and this is the MD, MTA and, M, and um, 
NYPD trying to give the appearance that it's safe or they on top of it and they not. At least not when it come to our trains and our buses and the safety in subway and buses. They don't they ain't on top of anything. And RCC, off topic real quick. You're behaving yourself now, huh? OCC, now you know how to talk to people, right? Everybody's walking around. And everybody's trying to act like they are respectful of hourlies all of a sudden. Like you give a damn. You're so polite and professional now. So moving forward, RCC, behave yourself. And this is an opportunity for all us. I hope there's some folks at 2 Broadway, 180, and everywhere where they have MTA senior management. I hope they're nervous. I hope they have anxiety. I hope they have a sense of uncertainty like we go through all the time. How they make our life a living hell, punishing us for nothing. Richie Davey was a prime example. Off the top is human error. What was human error caused by criminals on our train? Who are constantly on our train. They pulled the cord. Maybe they're trying to rob one of us then. What? And this is, we getting closer and closer to where one of us are going to die. That train operator, so our crews, could have been, uh, um, could have died in that. Could have been someone on the track. Any calamity could have went. And this is what's happening. We're getting closer and closer. And trans is doing nothing. Nothing. And the union ain't put no foot on their neck. You hear Richie Davis comments? He's quiet as a mouse. They don't care about our safety. And this woman, what's her name? Um, safety board chairman Normandy. This woman said more than 18 minutes and 29 seconds to defend us than Richie Davis has did his whole time in office. That's a fact. I hope we don't just need the um um NT what was it? NTSB there. We need the federal, we need the attorney general, we need the feds there. We need the U.S. attorney's office there. And see how they're breaking the law with us. What they're doing at the MAC. Everything they're doing to us, where we, how they're treating us. Our human rights. I hope they're under a microscope. Hey, this place, this is the opportunity. Investigate this place. This god-awful place. What's up, bro? This is the opportunity. And I want to share with y'all just how dirty this company is. And we're off to an ominous start for 224 already. And it's going to get worse before it get better. And we are the change. We are the ones that got to make this better. This is our time. Especially tier 6. This is our time. But let me get to something, Chairman Lieber. Chairman Lieber like doing these op-ed pieces in AM New York. And I don't know why, but he loves, that's his place. He does all met. So his op-eds. On December 3rd, he did an op-ed. And I want to share with you all this op-ed because it's very important. It's very important. And again, he throws us under the bus in this op-ed too. Again. And he talks about cost cutting at transit, right? Let me read this. I'm just going to read the paragraph. Staff from across the organization, led by agency presidents, poured over data to find new efficiencies to meet the terms of governor's, the governor's state budget agreement, which called on the MTA to achieve $400 million in annual cuts and say cost savings starting in 224. Thanks to their hard work, we have exceeded that goal and are on track to reach $500 million in recurring savings by 2025. 
How are we doing it? This is the important thing. We're reducing unnecessary employee absences and ramping, ramping up hiring to cut overtime at New York City Transit. Unnecessary employee absences. Now, let me get to... Oh, man, it's crazy. Hold on, let me get to this. Hold on. I wrote some notes. Now, this one thing, overtime is not promised. And brothers and sisters, y'all do. Everybody has they, their financial obligations. But I'm just saying this. I ain't no financial guru. But your check, you got to base everything you do on that 80 hours you working. Excuse me, because they're going to take that overtime. And that's what Davies is here for. He was in Boston. He was the head of the um, Secretary of Transportation in Boston. He reformed it. He made cuts. He didn't care about anything. He turned that whole system around. He wants to turn this around. This ain't Boston. He don't know that yet, but this ain't Boston. And they got goals. Employee valuability. That's what it's all about. So I'm going to ask you, how do you reduce unnecessary employee absences? How do you do that? If you sick, you sick. Um, if you, you're gonna bring your doctor's lines, they can't say that's a you sick. You got pneumonia. You got flu. Uh, 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 um, uh, infection, bacterial infection. Now they got sick inspectors who are coming to your house every day. They getting crazy with it. They're not coming you out for four days. They're gonna check on you nowadays. All four days. That's a pressure tactic. And let me say, yo, I'm not telling y'all where I'm going. Drumming, if you leave the house, I'm not telling you nothing. I got doctor's lines. I'm a grown man. I will never tell you where I'm going. You're crazy. And if I'm, you knock on my door, you better get out that car. And if I'm sick and can't walk down them stairs, so be it. Our brothers and sisters risking breaking their necks. Got hundred and something fevers, delirious, and they telling them to come downstairs to the door. Like they can't hear that cough, that wolfing cough. That what you call that, that cough. I forget that cough. Strap dope. And they want to see you. Come, you out your mind. So it's no way of of guaranteeing or proving that or reducing employees unnecessary absences. How do you do that? And it's like I said, the st sick in inspectors is a tactic. But you know what this come down to? This is why union sold us out. The gain sharing, the unnecessary employee absences. And there's only two ways to do that. One, when we get hurt. Any injury that we have on our trains, on our buses, on our platforms. Any injury in the yard, they fight us. Your doctor say they do it all the time. They fight us. So if you got, I say it all the time, you got the sprain wrist, you, you put on the brace. Carpal tunnel, put on the brace. Your back, you fell in the yard, put on the back brace. Your neck, put it under your, your turtle neck, the neck brace. The second is comp. So remember, during the contract, in the contract, say gain sharing. The new and 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 reps. I know this for a fact because I got called. They are deterring members from going out on comp. If you're hurt, go out on comp. Don't move that train. Pull that core. Don't move that train if you're hurt. Don't say I gotta get it to the terminal. No, I'm gonna clog up the railroad. You come first. So the gain sharing is to get us back to work. And transit breaks bread. Transit should be breaking bread with us from the congestion pricing. All that new money they're getting. They should be breaking bread with us for that. And they're not. So, okay. But I went to the, it's right there for you. I went to the Corvell Corporation website. This is crazy. So this is utilization review management. 
and I just quote, I'm not going to read the whole thing. This is ongoing review ensures that injured workers' care is progressing and that a continued hospital stay is warranted. So transit is going to determine how long you in the hospital. Go to that site. Go to the Corvell's Corporation website. The review. Retrospective review. The review is done when the injured worker receives treatment that was not pre-certified. Who pre-certifying your treatment? You know who's doing it now? Transit. They determining this transit. That's how you're gonna get unnecessary um abs- employee absences. That's how you reduce it. Limited their comp. We will certify the treatment or forward the curse the case, excuse me, to a board certified physician advisor to review it if protocols are not met. Who's reviewing the protocol? What protocols are they talking about? You're hurt. You got PTSD. You can barely walk. They're going to put pressure on you. You're going to get back. Get back on that train and bus. They have a return to work coordinator. Make Return to work coordinator. Make it easier for employers to ease employees back into their roles. We partner with employers to develop strategies, not just for the first day back, for the months that follows. That's nothing. We return employees back to work 23 days sooner than expected, resulting in significant savings. Go to their website. They don't think you're going to go to website. And then they say in 30 days, there will be no 30 days you won't be out 30 days. So they say after 30 days, you can go to your own doctor. Go wherever you want for your comp. There won't be 30 days. They'll have you back in 19 days. That's their goals. We, direct, we, we work directly with employees to understand the injured worker's role and minimize challenges they may face as they transition back to work. This is, this is, this is what came out on November 22nd. That the union told us nothing about. That was implemented, I think, on the 29th, a week later. Five days later, I believe. This is transparency, right? This is what they did. The union said nothing. And Libra, hardy tardy Libra, saying we reduce unnecessary employee absences to the public. This is in the paper. What is he saying to the public? That we don't come to work? That we just trying to stay out? What is he saying there? But the union let this happen. The union let this happen because of the gang shit. There's some more. This is return to work. We avoid additional claim costs. Reduce lost time. Go to their page. 80% of injured workers return to work within the first 30 days when their claim is referred to us within five days of the mild and moderate injury. You're not going to be 100%. They're going to determine what's the mild or moderate injury. This is how you reduce unnecessary in their eyes. Because there's no vandals, nothing. We don't, they don't care if we have a 12-9. And we see a, 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 a body in pieces. They don't care if you're punched in the face, spit on, pistol whipped. Somebody comes in your cab, pull a gun out on you. Throw feces on you, urine. Rob you. They don't care. What else? 50% decrease in litigation rates when cases are refer- within the, referred in the first 30 days. And that's why that 30 days is so important. They're going to do everything in their power. They're going to put so much hurdles in front of you right now. This people, what's going on right now? People going to urgent care. They don't have no psychologists for us. You, th- you worry about the dental. I never gave a damn about the dental. Let me tell you now. I don't care about the dental. When I used to pay, and I'm going to continue to pay, the cost of a, 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 a cheap used car to get my mouth done. 
Because one of our brothers and sisters said to me, Drummond, I'm off topic, but we got to talk about that dentist real quick. Drummond, I know a dentist that takes our insurance and he's good. You know what that led to? I can't bite my fingernails no more. He wrecked my mouth. I don't care about dental. Good luck with it. Everybody got bad dental. And what did you think we was going to get for $48 more a year? Who was going to get with that? $4 a month. And they act like that this is like the revolutionary in dental care, the union. But getting back to this, everything I read, and this is from, this is from the MTA handbook. If you use a Corvell net, use of a Corvell network doctor is mandatory for the first 30 days. After 30 days from initial treatments, employee may opt out of the Corvell networks if they choose. To opt out, employees must notify the MTA, and the MTA then will have the right to require a second opinion from a Corvell network medical provider. You ever heard or read something so corrupt in your life? They want to control every aspect of our life so we can get on our train, get on our bus, get stand outside that booth, sweep that platform, go in that barn, get on them tracks. This is why they need to invest. And the union did nothing. They didn't have the decency. I'm not buying in the crew room. I said this. And they're hanging up posters. The prop, I think the party promoter was doing the Christmas party. They was hanging up posters on the day that I got the email. And on the day it was implemented and said nothing. There was no pictures took in that day. There was no camaraderie and whatever they, and and, and camaraderie and unionism that day. Do y'all see this? We got checking with their doctors and, 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 and Mr. Lieber. Mr. Labor makes us look like we, under, we, we don't come to work. But they're going to crack down on that. They don't tell the public that they are uh, depriving us of our right to have comp. This is where we're at right now. This is what the union let happen. That's a fact. And l- let me read something. He also did an op-ed piece on January 6th. I wasn't going to read this, but I will, because for our brothers and st- station agents. This was yesterday, I bet. And I'm going to read the paragraph. And he's a liar. He's trying to give off the perception that the subways are safe, and we know they are not. You're a liar, sir. Mr. Lieber, you're a liar. And Transit Chief Kepler, you need to be fired. You keeping no one safe, but this is what he wrote. Traveling via transit is much safer. This is Chairman Lieber. In addition to fuel collisions, he had to respond to the to um the derailment. In addition to fuel collisions, there are just six major crimes a day on average in the system that now serves approximately four million daily riders. Almost the same population as Los Angeles. There's only six six what what is he what do he Deem a major crime, a murder, arson. He ain't talking about assaults. He ain't talking about them defecating on our trains. He ain't talking about us pulling the cord and stealing our equipment. He ain't talking about us for sure. It doesn't get much better than that. And yet we determined to make sure that even fewer still do our work with Governor Hoku. And Mayor Adams to install more security cameras. Them cameras ain't worth two cents. They mean nothing. Increase police presence. Where are they? We know that $150 million wasn't worth anything. 3,900% increase in overtime. I had the number wrong last time. Embarrassing. 3,900% increase in overtime. For like basically 10 more arrests. Where they at? I know where some of them at in our crew room sleeping. Or on their not sleeping on their phones. I know that. We know I don't begrudge listen, I never thought in my life I would be friendly with cops. Never thought it. Sometimes I'm on the play, I talk to them. I never thought that would happen. I got no ill will against them. I always thought they had the job to do. 
I just didn't like the excessive force and killing unarmed people. Other than that, they have a job to do, like we have a job to do. And if you're a criminal, your job is to get away. But let me finish reading this. It does get much better than that. And yet we're determined to make sure that still, through our work with Governor Hoke and Mayor Adams to install more security cameras, increase police presence, and deploy our newly out-of-the-booth station agents to serve as the eyes and ears of law enforcement. Now, who reads, let me say that again, to deploy our newly out-of-the-booth station agents to serve after eyes and ears of law enforcement. What, you huggy bear now? Station agents? What, what? Listen, AM New York is free. Every dope thing, homeless person, EDB, disgruntled, unemployed, violent criminal reads AM New York. They use them for pillows on our train. They're not paying for the Times and Daily News and Post. So who's reading AM New York? Now, how would they determine that? That now, you're basically, I'm just saying, you a snitch. I thought they had them do nothing. Security guards get them as a job. I could dig it. But them security guards do nothing. I don't know what they're there for. They could have did something way more productive with that money. Or give our station agents, add whatever they're paying them to that dollar. Give them that $10 an hour. You got to break bread with us at RTO too. But give them that money. I split that money with RTO and stations per hour. Them guards do nothing. But again, Chairman Lieber doesn't see us as human beings. We're grunts. He don't know where the, he don't come from where we come from. He just put station agents on front street. Station agents who have more responsibility than ever, who are getting disciplined when they're outside the booth. Kelly act like this was some monumentous achievement in labor management relationships, remember? But here this guy telling the public, anybody who grab one of them, everybody, to say that you are eyes and ears of law enforcement. You are there to watch what's going on. Just put you on front street. This is, they don't care about this. Libra knows nothing about this. But I thought y'all was ambassadors. What term, I forget, respect to my station agents, but I forget the term. It wasn't station agents. But they don't give a damn about y'all. Kelly don't give a damn about y'all. And this is the thing. Let's talk about, I wanted to talk about Richie Davis, I don't know how long I've been on, but I wanted to talk about Richie Davis' charges, too. But let's talk about our, this new name they got. Let's talk about this new name. Members first. Members first. And the very evil man once said, very evil man, said, if they repeat a lie often enough, it becomes the truth. I guess that's what Stand United is betting on. That guy's be what they're betting on. Because if you have a brand, you build brands over the years. Progressive action is progressive action. And regardless, we can't, you can only vet someone so far. If dudes are pretending to be one thing, that's why people front. If people pretend to be one thing, you never know. You never know in life. You don't know you can't trust someone till you can't trust someone. Trust is almost a, 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 a non-existent. It's a leap of faith. So you think there's real soldiers at Progressive Action. They do the work, you know. From, oh, you do good work. Yo, you fight. You got this and all that. Then when they get in the union, they flip. As this was a ruse, or they are their their fight, their real fight. You know, you don't know who's who till something goes down. So Canella gets over there, he turned, he turned quicker than Eric. These dudes is frauds. They're frauds. And let me say this, I'm gonna digress and I get back to their new name. I saw Canella last meeting. He said, I thought you didn't care. I don't care. Wherever God take me, I'm going with it. 
if you're able to finagle me not running, I'm going to live with it. If transit finds some way to get rid of me, I'm going to live with it. I make these lives knowing that transit will show these lives to an arbitrator. I make these lives knowing everybody in senior management is watching this live. God will dictate where I go, where I land. And I always have confidence in myself. I'm not changing. I can't speak for nobody else. Nobody else but me. So can I, I don't care. But that don't mean I ain't going to fight. I'm going to let Jehovah lead me to where he leads. Is He decides where I go. He decides where I land. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Just somebody tell me if y'all can hear me. Somebody said they can't hear. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Somebody. Can y'all hear me? You hear me? Can y'all hear me? Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, I apologize. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So, yeah. He gonna decide. He's always decided where I land. He, he wanted me at transit. I quit. Ask my classmates, I quit. But I'm here. And he had me here for a reason. It's his will. It's his will. So I don't care. I don't care to the sense that my family loves me. Drumming is going to be good. Ain't nothing fronting about what I'm saying about Jan Oliva. Libra. Not giving the damn about us. And Richie Davey throwing us under the bus. And McPhee being the wicked man. And any, any supervisor that I named. I'm always fighting. And when that time come, if I'm dead or whatever, in, in the cap, incapacitated, whatever. So I don't care, but I'm not going to let the likes of y'all walk over me. What I've been through in my life. You're nothing but a hot cup of coffee and a butter roll to me. You're out your mind. I'm going to stay fight. You're the easiest fight I ever had. Are you crazy? Huh, I ain't going to go because the internet... What have you? Social media is disgusting. It is. All it is is this and that. Everybody's saying this. That's all it is. But all I will say that there's nothing um um in auth I'm authentic. I'm genuine. Nothing I say. I respect everybody and the supervisors out there know I do. But I'm not gonna be disrespected. I don't like I don't live in fear. I don't like fear. I don't like nobody pushing up on me. I don't like to live that way. And I'm not gonna live that way. I wasn't raised like that. I was I didn't grow up in that era of disrespect. Everybody live by a C O D E, a code. I know very few abide by it now. I know the union don't. But one thing let me say is about the union. How can y'all ever, men and women, somebody do your dirty and say, how did y'all? Why would y'all do that to me? I'm a straight up person. How can you ever say that to anybody? How can you ever move forward in life? Five minutes from now, five years from now, 20 years from now. Get at somebody for doing you dirty. Or being unethical with you. Or not being stand up with you. How can you ever move forward the way y'all move around with your unethics? No rules, no honor, no honesty, no integrity. Ever walk up to somebody and say, they did you dirty. So if your husband leave, if your wife leave, if somebody rob you, if you're scammed, if you're embezzled. How could you ever give that somebody and say, how could you do this to me? And you're trying to do it to 44,000 people at TW Local 100. But let me talk about members first. I went on the tangent. I apologize. But let's talk about members first. That name. That name is crazy. But how could you put, call yourself members first, when you got retirees fighting for the medical and you did them dirty with the medical and they're fighting you? How can you call yourself members first 
when our brothers and sisters go out on workers' comp and injured with PTSD and transit and trying to send them back to work. And you let Carvel Corporation do what they do. How can you call yourself members first when you put station agents out there? When they get written up for not being in their booth? When you gave them additional responsibilities? How can you say your members first when you members first when you invite in labor relations to barbecues and you're in attendance? How can you say members first? How can you say members first when you got Ken Rivera now who banged in Jesse? You knew it. You're banging in members, still working with the membership. How can you call yourself members first? How dare you? Members first, remember this? This is the most one of the most disgusting things they ever did. If you got the brand, if you got the brand, your Geico, um, Apple, Progressive Action, New Directions. If you have a brand, you stand by your brand. People stand by, established in 1852, established in 1938. People's, a brand and organization or a brand, you stand by that. Why are you changing your name? If Stan United did so, yo, yo it should be a cakewalk. If Stan United has built a legacy, why would you change your name? You know why? Because it's going to give Canelo cover. Canelo going to say, I'm not standing, and they think you're stupid. Management think you're stupid. The union think you're stupid. So I'll give all those folks who came in with different slates and sold out and went to Stand United. So they're going to say members first. And no, I'm running with members first. I got nothing to do with Stand United. They think you're stupid. But remember, please, and y'all don't remember things. Remember this. Remember how the first two years, how you was treated. Remember how rude, and, and Canelo liked calling about Bozo. Bozo mean rude. That's what Bozo mean. Look up the definition. And Canelo got this mantra, the real work. You the only one that did work? You told everybody in Trumel, we got to bring up his lives. When this guy said he was getting 200 calls a day. Uh, 200 calls a week. How was he getting that? How was he helping members? He was calling. He only could call me. Uh, Tramel. I was his plug at the union. And he only could call Tramel. He was l- looking to Saf for some of our... He knows nothing. Everybody knows that. They won't say it, but they know that. So where the work is done. Consistency is the key. Look, consistently taking pictures. Consistent. They having meetings now saying... How are you think going? Oh, I got to, we doing something on the seven line. And on the 18th, we're going to the two. I've been working the A a lot. And I'm going to do the C. They love me on the G. That's his bread and butter. To say that he would, and guarantee you, he's going to put up a montage of all the places that all the, um, the crew rooms, locations, and yards that he's visited. But I remember, I'm going to pull that up too. He said, why? He was talking about me. I used to talk about being the best rep at 2 Broadway. I probably shouldn't. Kind of braggadocious. I shouldn't have spoke like that. But I was cocky. I'm arrogance. That's what those arrogance. God humbled me. Don't be arrogant. Be humble. But he does it every day. I might have did it 10, 15, 20, 30 occasions. He's been doing it everywhere he go. Look. Whoever will take pictures with him. But look. I'm here. I'm there. That's all he does. Is that's all members first. Is they think they can con you. They got nothing substantial to show. What have they done for us? Did you hear what Ricky, Richie Davis said? Oh, it's all management. Man, management has responsibility, basically. That's it. He should be talking, yelling, screaming. About the lack of safety, all sorts. How dangerous are you? We should get qualified immunity, like the cops got. If somebody attack us and we defend ourselves, that's the end of it. Nothing else said. 
But the union watches us to get our deals. They watch your mail to get our deals, progressive action. Then they, they, they finesse a little bit and come out, repackage it, they rebrand it, and say, well, this is what we're going to do. This union has done nothing. We've never been uh, um, in this shape, in this, in this environment before. The old timers will tell you, because they tell me, they've never seen it like that. Where's the change? Where's the change? And I'm going to pull up his, his, when he ran for office, Canelo Gomez. Where's the change? And maybe I will talk about Richie Davis. And I was thinking, real quick, if I saw somebody I know beating up their girl, what would I do? First, now, if I was there earlier, I said, if you know him or you have any relationships, you grab him, probably. Or if you came in on the tail end and you saw a sis disheveled, you would say, sis, you all right? Or you would say, yo, man, you got, you can't be doing this, man. And you know, I know I'm hesitant at getting involved with a man and woman fighting. Because a lot of times the woman, I've seen it, the woman will turn on you. You trying to help her? The woman will turn on you. It happens. This happened with me with my sisters. I mean, it got to be something crazy. I don't need, Me and my brothers, we didn't even get involved with my sister. My sister, we didn't get involved in that because every time we went there, she said, leave them alone. So that's tricky. But if you knew it, all of them had the obligation to say, yo, bro, you can't be doing that. man. You, you're the VP. You can't conduct yourself like that. So I even understand this is my issue. They let it, but they knew all this. They knew that he was in a volatile relationship that got physical. Should never get physical. Never. I'm not saying in my youth, I ain't grow up with a father. I was very ignorant. I remember striking a woman when I was in my 20s. I remember, I ain't know. Nobody told me not to hit a woman. Nobody told me I ain't that. But I was 21, 22. And something to me told me, something said to me, it wasn't no, no sense of right and wrong. Personally, I didn't want to get to a point where I lost control. No matter what happened, I didn't want to get to a point that I was so out of control. That a human being, a woman could say something to me and make me hit her. Because I never was going to let it get to that point. At some point, I had too much respect for myself to ever put my hands on a woman. But that was my misspeak. I wasn't 40. I wasn't 45. I wasn't no grown-ass man. I, I had enough respect. I, and, and I damn sure, I, I wouldn't even... Man, he, 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 he was at the union hall, allegedly. He didn't have the control when she ran to say, I'm not chasing her. He was so out of control that he continued the uh, attack, sis. And my thing is this. I could dig it. Some of you just didn't want to get involved. Some of you talked to him and said, yo, man, stop that. Some of you said, yo, get off her. Some of you said enough. Sis, you all right. You go over there, man. Go ahead. Go back upstairs on the ninth floor. But knowing what kind of man he was, how could you allow him to be president? All of y'all are culpable. Knowing what type of man he was, how could you, and they say the officers stand by him. What that mean? The, they stand by him with the contract? They stand by him with the Corvell Corporation? They stand by him his decision to talk to the press? And say um, Tremel was the agitator. They stand by him. Any the the officers. They stand by him with the charges against me. Him and Canella concocted. When don't these officers not stand by him? That's what we talked about. That's the corruption. That nobody has the integrity to step up. Nobody had the integrity. I think which are to say hey, this man can't be president. He's a VP, but he's not the president. He can't lead us. And think about this. Let's say he didn't. I don't. We don't know if he hits this. But men out there, women too. When you write the letter, 
when you get to a point with my dear Elizabeth, when you <laughs> when you write the letter, she don't want to speak to you. She ain't taking your calls. She ain't answering her door. She is finished with you. Yo, and you know, woman, if you write the letter, if you take a time to write the letter, they're going to take the letter. I don't care what they say. You slide it under the door, whatever way you do it. You tie it to a rock and you put it in the boat, and a little bottle and in the ocean. She's going to read that letter. But a letter denotes one thing, that you did something. A grown ass man at his age writing letters? Come on, man. Oh, you write the letter. You in jail. You write woman the letter. Or sometimes, you know, you feeling sometimes you've been in a long term relationship. Of course, you write the letter. You want to show your woman. You know, when you've been married a long time, sometimes that emotion, that appreciation, that love hits you. And you want to say something, kiss your wife, hug her, let you know how much you appreciate her. You might just. Excuse me, buy a card with some flowers. You want to show her the appreciation and the love and, 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 and how, you know, the companionship and how you respect her as a person and what y'all have together, what y'all build together. I could think it. This wasn't that type of letter. So something went on and whatever gone, he's embarrassed himself. Something went on. He's embarrassed himself. And when a woman gets to a point that she wants to take a picture, something happened. She's had enough. When they want to take a picture, come on. She had enough. And maybe I'm, I only can speak for black women. My experience is with black women. And it take a lot. It take a lot for black women to go to the authorities. You know what I would have to do? I know this. I would, I know so many relate. Black women hold you down. They know just our history and the judicial system. They know when they call the cops what that means. So they're very reluctant. No matter what she did, she was a bad woman, whatever. She knew the consequences of what she's doing. Maybe somebody had to convince her over the years to do it. Maybe she still didn't want to do it, but she had to. Because enough is enough. And this man can, this she, she might be doing it for the next woman. Who knows what she endured? We know about the leather. We know what she remembered to put on the paper. Who knows? But the issue is, this president did something. And he did something that no other president prior to him has ever done. Has that been embarrassed the, 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 the TWU Local 100? Is no president that ever represented TWU Local is in the position that he's in. People these days resign for less. And the people around them pressure them to resign. And say, man, TWU Local 100 is bigger than you, Richie Davis. But we don't have that type of union. Maybe the Teamsters do. Maybe other unions do. The, the teachers union who's suing transit for congestion pricing. That's a union. They for the members. So something went on there. And I want to say one last thing. I'm going to read the verse, but I'm going to say one last thing before I read the verse. This woman committees. Say sis is lying. Say sis had a nervous breakdown. When y'all just say, sis, we here for you? Shouldn't the members, this still a member? As professionals, a member, whatever's going on, maybe she's going through something. Where's the support for her? Women's group. Women's committee. Where's the support for sis? Where is it? You don't have to believe her. But where's the support? Ain't that what ain't that what this is? Ain't that what the union is all about? Where's the support for her? Where's the public statement of support? And the men, grown ass men, the officers support Richie Davis. And these guys seen what was going on. This is the union we have. For the members, if you was for the members, Yates wouldn't have been Sergeant Figner signatures. I forgot about that. 
This is where we at. Richie Davis should not be president. Like I said, people will step down for less. But I think the people around Richie Davis is worse than Richie Davis. They enabled Richie Davis. They support somebody that's wrong and somebody who's not equipped to be a president at all. Their quietness, their lack, their, 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 um, their silence. I'm sorry, excuse quietness. The silence that what happened with Tremel. And same thing in the RTO. The officers didn't say a damn thing. No officer said nothing. Said nothing. Nothing. This is who we dealing with. We they need to be replaced. This union is built on corruption. And these are just yes men too. This is a union of yes men. That's what this union is. A union of straight up yes men. There's no question about that. We have a union full of yes men. No integrity. Yes men. That's it. They go along with whatever this man said. Whatever that it ain't about what he says. Is that they are trying to hold on to power. They are trying to hold on to power. They don't care about the members. They care about 195 Montague. That's what they care about. You know with this Corvell Corporation and the whole other litany of things. Tell you that. But let me read this verse. Their malice may be concealed by deception, but their wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. That's Proverbs 26, 26, and Psalms 101, chapter 7. No one who practices deceit will dwell in my house. No one who speaks falsely will stand in my presence. Everybody be safe and take care.